Namaste beautiful yogis, welcome to Ali Kamenova Yoga. I'm Ali and today is day 28 of our 30 day hero journey through yoga. The time just flew by and we're almost approaching completion. You have all been super self-motivated, strong, loving the stronger classes I noticed. So you're strong yogis and you're all very much into the getting the alignment right and really deepening your practice. I'm so very proud of you, each and every one of you, and I'm really grateful to have been able to teach this. I'm very honored and thankful to be here with our beautiful community and for all of us to be getting to know ourselves better. Today's theme is know thyself. This is probably the sole reason why we all come to yoga, why we all are on a journey of deepening and self-discovery so that we can really get to know the true self, our true self, true nature, who we truly are. And although this is a really, really simple thing, because of its simplicity, it's also very deep. It's a profound subject and really there is no end to it. No, no matter how much we uh, dive in and go deep, there is always more there because we are a deep ocean and we can never get to the bottom of it. But at the same time, it's also very simple. If we understand our nature, we're basically pure love. We're love, we're bliss, we're love. And it is very simple and very complex at the same time. So today's practice is just to contemplate the reason why we come to our mat and how much, how far along we have come through our yoga practice on our life journey, on our life path, in our self-knowledge, self-discovery. So today I'm going to share something of myself with you, which is interval yoga, which is something I developed throughout the years with a background in power yoga. I integrated it with high intensity interval training. It is strong, it is powerful, it is a complete practice in itself because it's cardio, it's strength, it's stretching, it's letting go, it's breathing, it's tuning into the body, groovy flow, somatic movement and so forth. So it's, today we're doing an interval yoga class. It is strong, but you remember to flow with strength. Knees. So coming at the front of the mat, roll the shoulders back and down, lift through the crown of the head, chin parallel to the floor, feel your feet getting grounded, sinking into the mat, pull the belly in, connect with your core, taking a moment to quiet the mind and bring yourself into the present moment following the breath, feeling the sensations of the body, starting with the feet, feeling the floor underneath you, lifting through the crown of the head and feeling your body becoming taller. Hands over the heart expressing gratitude for the community. The collective energy we all share with these classes, this has been a very profound and powerful experience to, to be so honored to be teaching these classes and to share this with such a powerful community of strong yogis, motivated yogis, self-driven yogis, who are all here to learn interested in alignment and interested in the powerful classes, the strong classes. So I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for us to be creating this love circle of yogis. Inhale through the heart. And <laughs> chair, yay! <laughs> Remember the yay. Sit back, pull the belly in and lift. So if you sit a little deeper, you will feel that you wanna hover over your legs, lift. 
push the knees back and lift the chest up, tuck the tailbone just slightly. Burn, burn, burn. Exhale, forward, fold straight back. We can bring the hands over to the right and over to the left, softening, center, bring your hands onto your shin bones, look ahead of you, lengthen through the crown of the head, pull the belly in, Mula Bandha is connecting which is the perennial lock, Udhyana Bandha Two, two inches below the navel, pulling in. So feel the muscles there, pulling the belly in. Great. And step your feet back, plank. Press the heels away from you. Belly in, inner thigh squeezing towards the midline. Feel the strength of your body. Feel the strength of your thighs, the shoulders. <laughs> Keep the shoulders away from the ears and relax them. So here, even though this is a strong pose, find the ease in it. I always try to teach ease, grace, and even fun throughout the hard sequences. And if we make things look real hard, we're just struggling here and holding it with all our might, it actually makes it harder. But if you find the ease here, yay, the yay, the ease, it becomes easier and easier and easier over time to where it becomes effortless. Here, I don't feel anything. I can sit here and torture you for the rest of the day. <laughs> All right, lower down Chaturanga, upward facing dog, widen the back of your body here, your upper back, really focus on that area, widen it. Great, shall we do a second Chaturanga and down dog. Exhale, lift the tailbone high. Inhale the right leg up, step it through, drop the back heel down, warrior one. Hands over the heart, straight into warrior three. So we're gonna lower the chest over the right thigh and shift into warrior three. Once you find warrior three, level the hips, square the hips, flex the back foot and turn the toes down towards the mat, flexing the foot. Open the arms out, airplane. Bend the right knee and step it straight back into warrior one. Pull the belly in, press the right hip back, left hip forward, internal rotation. In the left hip, the femur, the bone, on the right side, the right thigh, presses back towards the socket. So you feel all this work happening quietly, invisibly in the body. And when we tune into the body, the beauty is that we tune into ourselves. The body is the vessel that holds the soul, that hosts the soul. So there is an element of all this physical work that brings us closer to our soul. It's very hard to speak about or describe. It's just something you feel. The more you practice yoga, the more you feel it. You feel this connection to yourself, to your own self. Are you ready for one more warrior three? Shift, balance. Don't judge your balance. If it's not that great, that's okay. You're here, you're doing it. And step it back, warrior three. The warrior one, sorry. So clasping the hands here, steady the hips and reach over with both hands to the right, lengthening. 
Beautiful coming out of this. Exhale down, plank. Chaturanga, up dog. You can bring your knees on the floor, second chaturanga, down dog. Inhale the left leg up, step it through, warrior one, straight back. Feeling that work here. Lifting the arch of the right foot, so pressing into the four corners of the right foot here. And you can bring your hands over the heart and shift, warrior three. Level the hips. Breathe. Airplane, open the arms out. Step it back to warrior one. Level the hips, pull the belly in, flex the foot. Warrior one, clasping the hands and reaching over to one side. And exhale down, plank. Chaturanga, up dog, knees on the ground, second chaturanga, down dog. <sighs> Tuning into your breath. And whenever you feel resistance in your body, in your mind, in your breath, Remember that there is a little switch that you yourself can do and relax into things, soften into things, sealed into things, without forcing things, finding the ease there. Inhale the right leg up, step it through, warrior one. And here we're going to kick the left foot to the right hand and back to warrior one. And again, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and 10, step it back, warrior one. Open the arms out to the sides, twist to the right, drop the hands onto the legs, look over your right shoulder and lengthen through the crown of the head, soften the spine, the tissue around the spine, the muscles. From here, reaching with the left hand forward, exhale it down. Keep your wrist underneath your shoulder and take a side plank. Here you could be onto your um, forearm if you want to avoid the wrist, or you can skip the whole pose altogether. Side plank. So either hold it here, modify it, skip it, or give me knee tucks. One, two, three, four, five, and take top of a push-up position. So your fingers are slightly in, and you can be onto the knees and keeping the body in one straight line or onto your feet. 
and we're going to step the right foot out on the outside of the mat take a push up and step it back step it out again same leg push up and back to three four and five and plank and chaturanga and up dog open soften let go and knees on the ground for a second chaturanga option now down dog hmm. next and let go one of the things to let go of in yoga is of expectations of desire to have a practice that is something something like someone else's practice like someone else's photos like what you should be just flow have fun let it go let go of the desire to get the splits or something just flow have fun be here show up accepting of where you're at hmm. and let's inhale the left leg up step it through warrior one and we're going to do a right foot to left hand kick one warrior one two warrior one three activating the glutes four five six seven eight nine ten step it back warrior one open the arms out twist to the left drop the hands onto the legs and look behind you over the left shoulder softening the spine or the tissue around the spine fluidity inhale out of this and exhale the right hand down take the position for side plank that you took on the other side Make sure that you're stacking your joints on top of each other. Shoulder over the wrist, over the elbow. Either modify it or try to give me five knee tucks, but the hips should be lifting. The hips are on top of each other. One, two, three, four, five. And push up. <clears throat> push up alignment. So elbows out. Step your left foot out. One, two, three, four, five, and plank. A really strong plank. Chaturanga, up dog, and really, really soften here. And maybe a second chaturanga on the knees and down dog <sighs> inhale the right leg up step it through warrior one And here you can bring your hands either over the heart or onto the hips. Lean forward and take one legged chair with the left knee on the side ready to pose out. One, posing the leg out. Let me turn towards you so you get a, a better view. One, two, three, four, five and back to warrior one and again chair and post it out one engaging the left hip three four 
five and back, warrior one, one more, one legged chair, one, two, three, four, five, step it back, warrior one. Exhale the hands down into top of a push-up, step it back. And we're going to take the right knee into the chest and across from the body, step the foot across, take a push-up and step it back. One, two, three, four, five, and plank, and chaturanga, and up dog and maybe a second chaturanga and down dog that class might be something to build up towards do a certain percentage of it and come back to it <sighs> inhale the left leg up step it through warrior one i'm treating you all like professionals after all you've been doing yoga for 28 days straight or with breaks no pressure, I really don't believe in put, like powering through. I kind of like to flow through even the hard things in yoga. Metaphor for life. All right, hands on the hips or hands on over the heart, however it works for your body. Take a one-legged chair, pulse it out. One, two, three four, five, step it back, warrior one, one legged chair, one, <clears throat> two, three, four, five, warrior one, feel the alignment here, and again, one, two, three, four, five, step it back, warrior one, exhale, top of a push-up, take the left knee into the chest, step the foot across, push-up and back, two, belly in, three, really flex the core, last one, and plank lower down onto your belly <laughs> lift here lifting the legs and lifting the hands out superman or whatever you want to call this pose and let's do swimmers one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one two three four five six seven eight nine twenty good job down dog <sighs> Inhale the right leg up, step it through, and directly go into warrior two. And here, see if you can sweep forward and bring the right hand onto the floor, somewhere in front of the right foot, taking half moon. Pose. If this was not a very graceful experience, don't get frustrated with yourself. Just laugh at yourself and move on. Skip it, do it again, try it again, whichever. Don't, don't get caught up in it because it's just yoga. It's really not gonna change anything about your life, whether you get a pose or not. But coming to your mat does, does have an impact on us. That's where it counts. All right, shall we do it one more time? Come back to warrior two and take a breath, focus on your drishti, gazing point on the floor. You can bend the back knee, which will give you a little push forward and strong core so that we're not flopping around, but we're connected and we shift with the intention of one smooth move. So calm your mind down, that's where the flutter can happen, the mind flutters, the body follows. So, 
nice smooth breath the mind is calm gazing at the point bending the back knee shifting and half moon flex the back foot and step it back warrior two shall we do it one more time you can yell at me <laughs> you can call me a name <laughs> all right one more time half moon and here glide back down into warrior two but glide your hand on the inside of the right foot and see how that feels side angle you can reach all the way over the head exhale both hands down lift the back heel up take the right hand up twist here press the back heel away from you and lengthen through the crown of the head so the whole spine is lengthening here you can even reach ahead of you and feel that length right exhale both hands on the inside of that right knee press the back heel away from you push into that back leg and see if you can take the right knee right foot off the floor knee towards the tricep squeeze the belly as hard as you can squeeze good step it back plank chaturanga up dog and we can do a second chaturanga why not this is interval yoga and down dog breathe come back to your center to your calm place and we'll prepare for the left side lifting the tailbone take the left leg up step it through directly into warrior two soften and drishti point calm breath strong core here we're activating the obliques when we move so that we're the body is moving with strength and you know where your hand is going you can bend the back knee and give yourself a little push but find a steadiness within within your breath and within your mind and shift and lower down if it was not in one move that's fine also i'm just giving you things to do but they're not a must it's just a suggestion things that i consider to be a fun project all right step it back warrior two we are experiencing this physical form of ours and just having fun with the senses all right shift one more time flexing the back foot it really helps uh, using the energetic points of the body the feet the hands the head here if you put a lot of energy in those points it does help with balance step it back warrior two and one last time you can do it and here we're going to glide the left hand on the inside of the left foot and step it back in side angle reaching over the head feel that length press into the outer edge of the back foot lengthen so good for your internal organs right hand on the floor back heel straight up take the left hand up twist here you can keep reaching up or you can reach over the head and here stack your shoulders on top of each other you will feel this beautiful twist through the midsection the fingertips are reaching away from that back heel 
Soften the breath. Exhale, both hands down on the inside of the left foot. Power up the back heel. And when you're ready, take your left foot off the floor. Squeeze the left knee into your triceps. Squeeze, pull the belly in. Power. This is power. And step it back. Chaturanga. And up, dog. And knees on the ground. <laughs> Chaturanga, down dog. Now, if you feel that, oh my goodness, this is hard. Slow down the speed of the video. There is a little place uh, on the right, lower corner of the videos. You can put it at 0 0.75. And I find it okay. You're not gonna feel like it's far too slowed down. My voice will sound about the same. Take the right leg up, step it through, come up, warrior one. Straight back, belly in. And here we're going to take chair pose, one legged chair, but you will straight the left foot in front of you. Square the hips so the knees are the same line, hip square, take chair. Step it back into warrior one. Again, one more time, chair, warrior one, chair. This time step into high lunge and we're gonna lower the knee down. One, two, three, four, five. The next five either the same or little hop. One, two, three, four, five. The next is knee ups, one, Two, but you can stay in the previous one where it's just lowering the knees down. Three, four, five. And the next will be cross lunge, side lunge out. One, one, two. Keep the knee back. Two, three, three, four, four, five. Five, and yes, there is a burn. Step it back, high lunge. Shall we rest that burning glute? Lower down, plank. Yeah, that's a rest pose. Now you're resting. <laughs> Push the heels away from you, pull the belly in. Very good, lower down, onto your belly. Lift here, cobra. Lengthen the crown of the head. Exhale, down dog. <sighs> Take a nice deep inhalation, complete exhalation. And then take the left leg up, big breath in. Step it through, warrior one. Are you ready <laughs> to flow with strength and ease? Letting go of the things you can do and embracing the things that you can do with joy. All right, chair. Level the hips so that the knees are along the same line. Warrior one. Chair. Warrior one. Chair. Belly in. And here we're gonna step into high lunge. Lower the right knee down, keep the left knee over the ankle. So here there is a the tailbone is tucking and we're lowering down one, two, three, four, five. For the next one, either do exactly the same thing or do a hop. One, two, three, four, five. Continue with the same thing or knee tuck. One, two, three, four, five. This is how we build strong legs and the next one will be cross back lunge side lunge stay low here one one two two three 
three, four, four, five, five, step it back, high lunge, exhale, rest in plank. Knees on the ground, sit back in child's pose. Keep your breath very calm as if nothing is happening. Come back up and we're gonna do a very quick somatic move. This is your introduction only. It is not going to be some deep somatic experience. But for those I do have more on my channel somatic classes and more on my website so here you're just going to move side to side and really feel the body feel the sides of the body moving into the body and making this an experiential moment you're experiencing the body experiencing the moment slowing down and stepping out of your ordinary way of holding your body. The idea here is that when we do this for a long time, we actually break the patterns in which the mind wants to move the body and the body takes over and starts to tell you, okay, I wanna move this way and then that way. So we're basically softening, relaxing, detoxing, realigning our tissue, our fascia, connective tissue starts to move us rather than just the bones and the muscles. It's a healing movement to so move a little more, moving into the sides of the body. The hands can do whatever they want to do. Here the idea is that everything can do whatever. Every part of the body. Moving side to side, side to side, side to side side to side great that was our rest and a little introduction to somatics take down dog some of you are introduced to somatic movement but for those of you that have never done it that's kind of how we start it we just move and we allow the fascia <sighs> tissue to start moving us in for us to break out of patterns. Breathe in down dog. Walk your hands to the back of the mat. Exhale forward, bend here. Shake your head, yes. And no, softening the face muscles. Corners of the lips are smiling. Softening your gaze. So we try to create that pattern of softer gaze. Let's take Let's take yogic squat, pressing with your elbows out into the knees. We try to soften the gaze. So sometimes you know how you're deep in thought and you're out and about amongst people. And sometimes you can unconsciously give someone kind of like a mean look or an evil look because you're not even looking at them or seeing them, you're inside your head. And that happens quite often to me where I see people and they seem to be drifting away, but they almost give you like a, like a fussy mean look. So we're trying to just not get into the habit of doing that. We're trying to soften the face. You can even bring your fingertips and massage the scalp here. Smile. It doesn't have to be a big smile or a visible smile, but just the corners of the lips and the eyes. So when someone looks at you, you kind of look kind, <laughs> kind of, <laughs> or you look kind and it's almost that you're blessing people with your look. We all have energy and we all should extend our 
highest energy that we can share with people. And that is that we're trying to shift the patterns in our head and create that space where we extend blessings. All right, walk to the front of the mat. Cross your right foot in front of the left and walk back. And here, walk to your right, stretching the legs. And back to the center. Look ahead of you. Walk to the front. Change sides, left foot over, walk to the back. Walk your hands all the way as far as you can to your left and breathe here into your hamstrings. Walk to the front. Take your left foot between the hands and walk your hands between the feet, feet pointing out, hands onto the thighs and come up, plie. Here we're going to pulse. One, two, three, four, five. For the next round, we're going to lift one leg and then the other, this really strengthens the hips. One, two, three, four, five, six. So try to stay as much in your plie when you lift the opposite leg as possible. Great. Plie. And you can just give me a little groove. Change the direction. Lower down, lift your heels off the floor, lower them down, bring your hands onto the thighs, press your right hand and straighten it into your thigh and look over the left shoulder, self-adjustment, opposite side. Back to center, wiggle your feet just a little closer and we're gonna do pulse, knee lift, pulse, knee lift. One, two, push the booty back. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Back to plie, move the shoulders and move them forward and back softening relaxing the shoulders moving tension out of the upper body good let's inhale out and exhale hands right over the heart without touching the hands are not touching and you're not touching your chest open inhale and bring Great, straighten the legs and lower the hands down. Take your left shin bone down on the floor. Pigeon, lifting the rib cage as high as you can. Exhale, lower down. Breathe out of the hip. We strengthened the hips with some of the exercises today. So now we're stretching the hip. It is good to build a balance between the two. That's why in my classes I do a lot of strengthening because only stretching, only yoga, it is not enough. Not enough strengthening for the hips, not enough cardio for the heart and for longevity. 
So I try to bring everything into one. It saves time and we get to empty the mind. and let's change sides you can go back to down dog and draw a few circles with the left knee and bring the right shin bone forward you can walk the left foot further back so that we're opening that shin bone further away from the hip bones keep that left hip down and hold here so try to have a really good pigeon what is a bad pigeon and it's unfortunate but sometimes yoga teachers teach that and I feel like they shouldn't teach it because it's wrong it's it's okay if a student does it but the teacher should not demonstrate something like that so try to know for yourself how your body aligns here and one way to make it a little uh, more um, deeper of a stretch is to walk your in this case left leg further back so the heels opens away from me without you yanking the leg back and forth you can adjust to just walking the back leg forward so that we're not putting too much pressure on the knee here and you should feel a good stretch through the hip inner thigh sometimes hamstrings sometimes the hip flexor on the opposite side but it shouldn't be painful pain is a in yoga in sports it's an indicator of you need to back off you need to stop what you're doing and sometimes people ask how do i know the difference between good pain and bad pain in stretching in particular and it is quite if you listen to your body there is alarming pain and there is uh, just a nice stretchy feeling you want to feel the nice stretchy feeling not too far you haven't gone too far with the stretch it just feels quite good and sometimes that may mean here you're rolling on top of the shin bone and staying here hips are equal distance from the floor you can bring a block underneath your booties for support and take it from there your body will open when it is ready no need to force and push poses onto your body all right back to down dog and a few circles here lower the knees down sit down onto your body round the back and lay down onto the back hmm. bridge pose press your elbows down feet parallel to each other lift the hips walk your or bring your chest closer to your chin release extend the left leg down right knee into the chest draw a few circles with your toes change the direction bring your knee across keep your right shoulder on the floor and keep lowering the left knee as far as the knee would go without removing the shoulder of the floor soften find a very softening breath here exhaling and softening the belly and that will allow you to go a little deeper here any hell coming out of this opposite side left knee in, right leg on the floor a few 
circles with your toes and let's bring it across so make sure that your shoulder is on the floor then you can be off the floor eventually as you soften your knee will come across but if it doesn't that's no big deal Inhale, coming up, soles of the feet together, right hand onto the belly, left hand onto the heart. Rest here for a few moments, showering your body with love. You can visualize an inhalation through the heart area. It can be pink or green or white or whatever color. Just make sure it's a crisp tone it's a clean color not a murky color and just inhale and shower your body light spreading through the body from the heart out into the extremities just the way your blood works <laughs> circulation Big breath in, bring your hands on the outside of your legs, gently bring your knees up, feet on the floor, and here you can extend the left leg, straighten it and bring it over the chest without forcing. Just bring it as close to your chest as you can, stretching the hamstring opposite side. And you can experiment here with flexing the foot. You'll see how this will engage a lot more of the hamstring and the calves. Great, release. Roll onto your side. Rest for a quick second here. Press yourself up to sit it. Coming into a seated position, roll the shoulders back and down, lengthen through the crown of the head, sitting tall, proud, glorious. You can inhale the hands all the way over the head. And over the third eye, blink your eyes open and over the heart. Bowing to our hearts for their forgiveness, compassion, and love. Namaste. Thank you all for joining me today. It was a pleasure to <laughs> offer an interval yoga class in this series. And I will see you tomorrow. We're nearing the end. Make sure that you're subscribed and hit the notification button because we'll continue in a little different way, but we'll continue with this uh, practice uh, throughout the year, just uh, not maybe every single day the same way we did in January, but we'll do some challenges throughout the year and I'll continue with two classes a week, uh, weekly on this channel. So stay tuned. Don't. <laughs> Some of you said that they're bumming about the ending of the series, but I will have surprises and presents for you throughout uh, the year. So I'm really grateful for this practice together and that you're um, allowing me, letting me, holding space for me to teach this uh, series. And I will see you tomorrow. Remember to flow with strength and ease.